A pleasant comedy by Soft Effects titled I Hate Microscience Hard Disk Drives. There's one of them now. This is a model HH612C, 10 megabyte model. And its mean time between failure hours must be around 10,000. No, that's all right. I've learned how to fix them. <laughs> Let me show you how to fix a, a microscience hard drive. I'll fix it all right. The secret is you have to reformat them. And this is the most economical way to reformat a microscience drive. This fixes them microscience drives all right. This fixes them. real good. Most hard drives have a non-destructive <laughs> format. <laughs> Not with Microsoft. Always remember that a format <laughs> destroys user data. You can double the speed by having another drive at track zero. This procedure works equally as well for mini scribe drives. The head select, of course, is done automatically making it fairly easy to do the overall process. Uh oh, that was a seek error. That'll have to be done again. Oh yes, we've gotten very good results, very good results. Now after a procedure like this, it's a good idea to closely inspect your drives. You don't want to give a drive back to a customer that uh, has uh, problems. That external warping is a symptom of some bad tracks, so you'll have to watch that when you format it for DOS. The mini scribe. There are no bad tracks, but you should uh, inspect a little closer. Sometimes you can find that uh, some parts do come off. Now, I'll see if I can focus in on. Oh, yes, there you see one of the EPROMs has come off. So you'll want to take and put that back into its slot on the board. I'll demonstrate how to do that here. Now, it's a little crooked, so you'll have to use a special method. You take something heavy like a hammer or a big wrench type affair, and you just see if you can get it seated. Eh? Oh, I broke that one. Uh, well, <coughs> you can always use substitutes. Oh, I got part of it in, and uh, yeah, mostly broke. If you don't have a big hammer or something around, uh, you can always use a freshly formatted drive. So 
There's a, another EEPROM for that wheel. Oops. Okay. So you can just tap ring with another drive. Eh? There's all sorts of ways of doing it, of course. Most of us just shove them in. Make sure none of the legs go crooked, of course. Most visual inspection is important, of course. Take a close look at any relays that may be on the units. Any crooked transistor should be straightened. Oh, well, looks like we may have trouble plugging in the uh, interface cable to this one. The manufacturer obviously didn't take care in choosing uh, shock resistant ICs. And this uh, PC board wasn't shock reinforced. There, now that EEPROM's installed properly. Switch settings are always an important thing to get right. If your absolute filter comes out, it's a simple matter to stick it back in. Uh oh, this one has lost its seal. This drive may not be recoverable. I noticed another problem with this drive. Um, it has to do with the, the, sp the spindle motor. And as you can see, this one is loose. Now this drive should work pretty good for this is the microscience one of their downfalls is the old split plug switches 9 and 10 are intact and I'm pretty sure they are supposed to be the other way no nope, maybe 9 should be off yeah. another hard plug in place now you see there's a good design. That's on the microscience, surprisingly enough. Those transistors there are protected by armor. Very good. I think I found a problem with this microscience. So this this crystal. I don't think it's gonna work anymore. Most of the plugs didn't do too bad on this board. This is the motor speed control board. And that's where the index sensor plugs in. It's not too bad off, you can still plug it in. The power plug still retained half of its polarity. This is where the head stepper motor plugs in. As you can see that plug did pretty good. But the interface to the processor board, I think that will not be too easy to plug it in. Okay, and for those wrecked plugs, if you have trouble plugging it in, what you do is you set it all up in the right place so you can plug these plugs in. And there's the step one. And the read right heads, they're doing fine. Just plug them in there. Like I said, the sector deal. You'll want to put all this stuff together first before you attempt to uh, plug in that uh, interface to the logic board. Now you just get it lined up there, you see, as best you can, and then again, you take something heavy <coughs> and uh, force it a little bit. I think that's got it. Oh yeah, that worked real good. See that? Look at that. Those two are plugged together very good. Very good now. Oh, I unplugged it. Oh well. I can always plug it in again. Another thing a conscientious t technician will do is have a look inside. Just a quick peek inside to see if there's any damage to the heads or the tracks. Well, I think there has been a little bit of damage. See on that head there, we, we have a bad erase coil. The erase coil has completely come out. 
And I think that dent there will mean a bad sector or two. The uh, stepper motor band is still in fairly good condition. It does have a few loose ends, but uh, it still got life. Yeah. I'll just check the head assembly for a free, uh, easy phone seat. And as you can see, it still spins really good. The mini scribe unit <coughs> didn't uh, work out as good. You can see it doesn't seat freely. And uh, I don't think that would spin up very good. No. That's due to the loose uh, motor, as we saw before. You know, it's pretty loose. Yeah. Oh boy, that'll be some bad tracks. <laughs> Ooh, those two. Hmm. Uh, maybe this drive isn't uh, gonna be usable. I don't know. <laughs> when you have the drives open like this. You have to remember to be careful. Don't drop anything on it. Because they are fairly fragile, you know. And there's your ultimate goal. A freshly formatted microscience and a freshly formatted mini scribe drive. Gives you a good feeling when you do good work. Watch for my next training video. I'll be covering the topic of aligning full height floppy drives. There will also be one available on quick installation of RAM on 8 MHz XT boards. And I'll also be covering the formatting of full height IBM 20 MB drives. So until next time. Happy computer fixing.